Welcome everybody connected online. Amen. Praise God. Welcome to our week, evening uh, midweek service at Strong Tower Church. Before we get into the Word, um, my family, my wife, and our daughters went to Kansas City to the Send, and I want them to share a little bit some highlights or something that God did in them or that you felt like, a, you know, something that you really felt the Lord was highlighting for, you, for both of you or you or, you know, I know Jesse's there for emotional support, whatever you guys are doing. So just, just share so people would know because it was like pretty powerful, right? Yeah. Go ahead. Amen. Good job. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Jess? Yep. Good, good. She said, like, it came full circle for me as well. And, like, just 
verses that had stood out for me since I was like that age, fifth, sixth grade, um, and seeing how that is coming to fruition and uh, how our generation is supposed to serve the Lord and um, be discipled and go out into the community and share his gospel. And like, um, there's one verse that, it's a verse they talk about fairly often at IHOP, but like, there's a lot of things that culturally, at IHOP are not your cultural norm, that it was like, oh my gosh, like, a lot of people are hearing this part, this message um, for the first time. And um, one is about Song of Solomon 8.6, where he talks about um, being set, us uh, having him set as a seal upon our, as a seal on our arm that his love's the strongest death and um, his jealousy is demanding us the good. And how that connects to the first commandment to love God with that kind of zeal and love people um, in that way. Um, and that was something that I felt like back when I was in sixth grade and I went to church camp. And that's the song, like the set me as a seal song, um, was a song where I felt God like speaking to me in a way that I hadn't before, and I kind of could see that um, him like calling me into serving him and like him calling me to himself and to worshiping him through that song back then and seeing it come full circle now was just like one little like glimpse of things that I saw happening um, at the set this weekend. And just being around other people and like praying with our friends um, and being able to like um, worship together and pray for each other and encourage each other in that way is really special being back there. Awesome. Thank you, girls. Well, why don't we speak a word to the, is it Generation Z, what is it, Z? Yeah. I, I can't keep up with all the, <laughs> go for it, speak a word or something that you feel like have in your heart. And we're going to pray. We're going to get into the word in a few, few minutes. Stay connected. Go for it. One or both of you or whatever you feel like it. Yeah. Just go for it. Okay. Lord God, we thank you for this past weekend and this past week where so many people came together to worship you and acknowledge you and all that you've done for us. Lord God, we have to just declare this um, word of identity um, over our generation and over our nation. Lord, that people would return back to you, that you would turn the hearts of the sons back to the fathers and the fathers back to the sons. Lord, mm. that you would just come in um, like a flood into our nation, into our churches, into our communities, Lord. That your love would be poured out on them, Lord. They would come to know who you are and who they are in you, Lord. That they would, um, you would redeem people's stories and that you would um, just redeem a generation, God, that is supposed to be the post-Christian generation, Lord, that they would be the new Christian generation, that they would come in and stand firm on your word, and they would um, stand firm on um, who you are, Lord God, and that they would just um, bring in new souls and new um, people into the kingdom of God, that we would make your kingdom on earth, Lord, that as earth, um, as, as is in heaven, so on earth, yes. Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, Lord God, I just declare that over our nation, over our um, city, and over our church, Lord, that your will would be done, and that um, we would just be able to um, show the Father's love to everybody that we come in contact with. Amen. Yes. 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 God, I ask that, um, um, standing on this word, Lord God, I ask that you would continue to partner with our generation, Lord God, that your spirit would continue yes, to manifest itself in new ways, Lord God, and that signs would follow um, the believers, Lord God, and people would continue to turn their hearts to you, Lord God, that the few thousand that were there would become a few million, Lord God, and I yes, ask that amen. you would continue yes. to burn your seal on our hearts as we move forward, Lord God, and that we would be yes. committed and disciplined and wanting to share um, all that you've given us and the freedom that we have in you and the gospel, Lord God, and I ask that you would um, be with us, Lord God, that you would strengthen us in our connection to you, Lord God, and that um, you would strengthen us as the younger generation would partner with the older generations, yeah. Lord God, and that we would work together as a family of God, Lord God, and that the bride would be prepared, Lord God, that your church would be made pure, Lord God, as mm -hmm. we come together, and that we're purified together, Lord God, and that the things that are currently blinding our sight from moving closer to you and moving us closer to each other would be um, washed away, Lord God, and that we would be unified as a body, Lord God, 
and that we would be unified in our love for you and the people around us. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Glory. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. Isn't that good? Yes. Praise God. That's why we do what we do. Amen. Yes. Good work, girls. I mean, you guys could preach. Amen. Are you ready for the word? Amen. I got a very interesting title today. Um, I will continue what we started Sunday, but let us pray before I get into it. So, Father, we thank you once again for the privilege that it is to share your word. And I pray, Lord God, help me communicate with clarity. I pray that you would, just as it was said already, prepare our hearts, minds, ears, eyes to see, hear, and understand. And I pray, Lord God, that... Um, you, you just think through my mind. Use my vocal cords and burdens be removed, yokes be destroyed. I pray, Father God, that you would have not only hear, but everybody that connects through uh, Internet and Facebook and YouTube and all the platforms, Lord God, that they would be blessed also in the name of Jesus. Are you ready for the title? Yeah. It is not about you, boo. How do you say that? Is that it? It's not about you, boo. Is that good? Yeah. Well, as I was going through the message, I begin to think about this, and you're going to get into it. Uh, you're going to understand why uh, on the message on Sunday, which was about, are you a water walker? How many of you remember that? Yeah. And, and, I, and I always go through my mind, it's like uh, from Sunday to Wednesday, I keep going over the same message. I keep meditating on it, and I keep looking at it. What did I see, or what were the emphasis? Or something that I can go back to. And then this morning I was thinking about, it was about being a disciple of Jesus. Can you say amen? But I, I started to see from that perspective that if it is not about us individually, uh, I, I, in a church. I mean, this is the main thing when you, people are going to church or church shopping, which is a, 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 an expression very different from us in our culture in Brazil. But it's like, you know, is that how they say church shopping? When they go and go look for a church. Uh, it is like people usually don't go and, and uh, you know, usually it's like, what does this church has to offer me? Is that right? And, or, what will I be getting here if I come? Yeah. It is never like, how can I serve? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What can I do? Where can I plug in? Even when we think about ministry, the question should be, what kind of ministry can I be plugged in to serve, and not what kind of ministry can I be plugged in so I can have my needs met? Yeah. It might hurt a little tonight, but I think it's a funny title. Yeah. You know, because uh, again, it is not, and we're going to go back to that scripture, that text, there's a lot to offer us, but I do believe that not only church, not only ministry, I believe life can be better if we understand it's not about us. But, and, and, and really, I, I would try to be very practical. Marriage is the same thing. What can I bring to the marriage to make you better instead of uh, you're not making me happy? Hello? Yeah, talk to me. I mean, if you're doing good on those things or if you're, you know, just... Think about later, for, just for the effect of the cameras and everybody's like, yeah, amen, yes. <laughs> and, and I think, the, I'm serious, the problem is like, we hardly ask the right questions. Not only marriage, but in most relationships. It's like, you know, we, we really, in, in a way, we're afraid to ask the things we need to ask, but we're expecting the person to give us an answer for something we didn't ask in the first place. So it's like, you know, and actually today is our 26th anniversary. Yes. 26. Yay. So, I, you know, I think I can say a, a, a thing or two about marriage. You know, uh, that's not my, my thing tonight. But I, I want us to see from that perspective, because it's like if we, in a marriage, in the church, in relationships, we're just there trying to get something. Let's imagine for a moment, because I know we're not, but if everybody wants their needs met all the time, you're not making me happy. You make my life miserable. Look at what you did. 
Look, I'm not happy. It's because of you. I mean, we're shifting the blame instead of like, how can I, what will take for us, and, and again, our fear, and I'm going to get to that, because many are afraid, like, if they do that, people are going to take advantage of them. So that's why they don't want to be plugged in, or people are hurt in other churches, and they think, I'm never going to serve again. I'm never going to do that again. I'm never going to go there again. I'm never going to have friends again. I'm never going to have a relationship again. I'm never going to be in ministry again. I'm not going to preach again. I'm not going to be a pastor again. And again, it goes back to me. Me, 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 myself, and I. Right? So friendships, I mean, so those things, and we could stay in each one of those. I just put a little bit so we could see. It is like, and, and I try to do this in, in our marriage. It's like, even when we go through some challenging, it, it is like, if I say I'm sorry and that is not enough, what do I need to do for you to realize that I am sorry? Because, I mean, you know by now, and most of us here, you guys are, you know, we're just babies getting married here. Like 26, some of you, like 50. 40, you know, but, but the thing is like, if I'm trying to communicate something that for me it is for real, but the person does not understand, I need to go an extra mile and say, wait a second, what do we need to do to get this thing behind us? Because usually, I was talking to my wife about this today, you know, I am trying, really, it, it is like it takes discipline because, you know, uh, it, it was a huge, you guys have no idea how it's a shift to go from being an evangelist on the road seven months in a year than becoming a local pastor. I'm not saying I don't like it now, because I do, I enjoy it, but at first I was miserable. Because to me, like going to church on Sundays for an hour at most, it was like, this is not serving Jesus. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is me. Okay? But for someone that's used to go to church from Monday to Monday, and our services last at least two to three hours, and then you go a Sunday morning, and people call that going to church, I thought I was like backslidden or something. I'm serious. You know, so it, is, it was different, but now I see the, that there is more to it than just coming to church one or two hours on a Sunday. You know, and then for me right now, which is only four years that we're here, it, every time, every moment I can spend with each of you, it becomes ministry. Amen. When we're talking, when we're going out, when we're even playing a game, or when we're eating together, when we're having breakfast or brunch or lunch, or it, it, those moments right now is like, no, 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 this is ministry. And you can gear the conversation towards that instead of being just like spending time together. Amen? So, uh, so that's where it got my, me thinking on those things. Is, it's like we have, we, something's got to happen, and we're going to go back to the scripture to see it, where it's not only about us. In a relationship, it, 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 and, I, and again, there is moments to laugh and to enjoy and to have fun, but it's like, what, do, what can I do to help you? Yeah. I'm serious. It is so satisfying when we understand it's better to give than to receive. And when you're looking constantly, I'm not talking about a burden when it's like, oh my gosh, i got to serve again. No, it is like finding ways where you know that it's like, man, if I do this, or, or and, and sometimes it's like you see a need and you're thinking about why nobody's doing something about that. Usually that's how God deals with you, right? It, it is like, I mean, let, let me use the example, like, I don't know, the speaker is a little bit shifted to the wrong side and you go crazy about angles. Right? So in your mind, it's like, man, that speaker would be so much better if it was 10 degrees to the left. And I'm like, I don't care about the angle as long as the sound is coming out. But for you, it is that important. But you're thinking, who could do it? Now, if you have that clinical eye to see something like that, you should be doing it. God gives you a burden for a reason. You know, we're going to have our picnic. At the end of the month, yes, we're going to have our picnic. So it, it is awesome. We do it once or twice a year, you know. And, and then, I mean, Lee and Barb, I mean, they, they really embraced it. It's like, Pastor, we got it. Yeah, you know, and, and, and so they saw the need. They want to serve in some way. They feel good about serving. It's not like, oh, my God, picnic is here again. <laughs> it's only once a year. Or twice, right? So we, we use those moments and we see how can I be a blessing by doing that? And if you feel like you want to help, yeah, talk to them, connect to them. It's like, what can I do to help? 
It is not like, you know, yeah, man, I'm going to do it, and I will be there, and I'm sure I'm going to be fasting for three days so I can eat a lot. I mean, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it has to be a different approach in everything. If we approach from the perspective of it's not about me, it's not about you. It's not about us in the sense of, you know, me, 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 me. So ministry, marriage, uh, business. I mean, it's like uh, I, I, this thought came to me just a little ago. I was thinking about, because I'm I really against the culture now that you go to a kid's game and everybody gets a trophy, even if they don't win. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know some people might don't like that because it might hurt some kids' feelings. If you lost, you lost. Period. That's how it is. It's like, no, I didn't get a consolation prize because I was a good, slow child playing basketball. No. No, because I could have shot. You know, yeah, so we don't have your heart broken. No, it was bad. I was bad. You don't get a trophy for that. You know, so I think we, we want the rewards, but we don't want to put the time in. We want the benefits. We want the perks. We wanted, yes, the blood. Yeah, what can I get it? I mean, when we went to, uh, to see the colleges, which we went to one, two, three, or three or four, three, right? We went to three. I mean, how amazing. One co- college better than the other. It's like, yes, they are offering you all that, but they're expecting you to study. <laughs> ha! Look at that. Really? I got to study to get all that? Mm-hmm. So it is not just like, you know, and, and I mean, some of those scholarships are amazing. Or the same thing with the scholarship. In order to do scholarship uh, or to get in a scholarship, you're going to have to apply it. You're going to have to apply yourself. You're going to have to do certain things in order to tap into that reward. Yeah. Amen. So it is like we're expecting too much. I, the, 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 with this message, when I, when I see it, it's like we're expecting more. It's not saying that God is not okay for us to have more. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. But I believe that we're, 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 the order is not correct. God is expecting us like, yeah, you give. Then la- let me work. You do your part. You serve others. You pray for others. You be nice. You be Christian. Then let me deal with the reward. It's not like, okay, God, you promise your word. Good measure. Press down. Shake it together. Running over. It's like, hey, he knows that. It is the fact of how can I not. It's like after a while, you don't even think about if he's going to return or not. He will. We know he will. But I'm not doing because of the reward. I'm doing because it feels good to do it. It feels good not to think about yourself all the time. You know, and so that's how it is. And I tried. I'm not saying I get it right all the time. I'm not trying to put myself on a pedestal here saying, oh, man, look how he does. No, I try to find moments. I try to find opportunities where I can think or bless or be an encouragement to somebody else. Had breakfast today at a certain restaurant in town. I just felt about it. You know, it's not only like you give a good tip or something. No, I let a note. I let a scripture for the person who served me. And I said, thank you for your service. And she might read it. I hope she does because not many people would do that. And I put Jeremiah 33, 3, and I hope she reads it. It's like, oh. So it is like, I don't know. It, it's not on me to if she's going to do it or not. My part is like, I'm going to do it something that it might instigate in her the desire to say, oh, what is that? And she might ask someone. It's like, oh, that's a verse in the Bible. Oh, maybe I should read it. See what, Amen. So it is it's really, but, but to do that, we're going to have to step out of our way. To serve, to love, to encourage, to be a good husband, to be a good wife. It is like, and, and again, the fear is like, what if I do that and someone takes advantage of me? Well, you didn't even do it yet. And you're thinking about someone using that. Can, can we just do it first and then we deal with that later? Can you say amen? Amen. So that's what got me thinking about this. You, you know, it's like, no, you, you, we have to get back to, yeah, acts of kindness. It's just serving one another and being a blessing to one another and having, you, you know, and, and that's how it is. It's like, how can I make somebody else day or moment? Because sometimes we don't have a lot of time, but we have that little moment. You know, it, it is like, and sometimes it's a phone call, sometimes it's a recording, sometimes it's something like, I'm going to do it, I'm going to pray for you right now, I'm recording this, and I want you to listen. I, I want, and then when you see that people do that, it's like, man, I don't even know him or her. And, and then it's like, yes, that's what it's all about. It's like Jesus was trying to instigate in his disciples, it's like, it's not about you, boo. 
Because it seems like every time, I mean, they, we, we, I said that Sunday, they had a great, huge appetite. Yeah. Everything, they're going to look for food. They're going to go buy some bread or going to go buy some food. And, they, and Jesus is there ministering to the woman at the well. It was needed for him to go there. So, I mean, there were several things. We have that message online. You know, but then the disciples come and they're like, after they came because they went to buy food for themselves. There's always this thing like, I'm hungry. Right? Which is, it's, it's, it's like, wait a second. We, we're going to have, we need to curb our appetite. And I'm not only talking about, you know, eating but curbing the appetite of whatever it is if we're going to serve others. Amen. Otherwise, we're missing an opportunity, a moment. The church, sometimes all we have. That's why I really encourage my kids. When they talk about, you know, I, I try to balance it out. They go and they have fun and they spend time with their friends. Anytime they say, Dad, uh, do you think we can go and to this conference or to the city or to whatever it is that is related to God, I'll make it happen. I don't care where it is, where it is, how much it's going to cost. Because for me, it's like it came from them, the desire to go there. They want to go after Jesus. So what it depends on me as a father, I'm going to do whatever I can for them to have even more moments like that. Because I know one moment like that can change their lives forever. Yes. You know, now we know that whatever happens at the stadium, that is not life. It is just like going to an NFL game, which I've done a few. It is like, yeah, they prepare the whole year for 16 games a year. Is that it, 16? Yeah, okay. <laughs> if they go to the finals a little more. You know, I know NBA is 82, but then there's a, you know, and I know the, I think the, the longest one is baseball, 120 games. You, you know, but that's the thing, though. There is a preparation for that stage so they can demonstrate something that nobody saw that they were doing all year long. When you talk about IHOP, I mean, those guys that they are playing there, they have to commit for four hours a day worshiping Jesus. And then when they play one key, you feel the glory, right? It's like, oh, my gosh, how do they do that? Yeah, four hours ministering for three people yeah. or two. You know, they, they do shifts of two, right? They change, 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 change. So, but that's the thing, though. We don't see those moments. What we see is when he come out in the stadium. We don't see what they go through to have and to minister to the audience of one. So again, that that's, has to be that, you know, that preparation, preparation, preparation. And the more, I believe, the more God exalts you or the more God brings you up, the lower you got to go and more prepared you got to be. It is like, Lord, how can I make this better? So in, in communication, how can I communicate better, speak better, pronounce, pronounce better? I mean, I'm serious. I, I, you, you know, it's not because English is not my first language that I'm going to speak English in any way. It's like, no, I really prize and I try and I want. And my goal is like, I want to be the clearest and, you know, speak in a way that everybody understands. Because I know, I mean, this is what is... I'm about, you know, it's like, well, how can I do something that I believe God called me to do and I don't invest time? Amen. Amen. But the goal is like, it's not about me. It's about being a blessing to others. So that could go to marriage. That can go to friendships. How can I help jobs? I mean, most people, when they're looking for a job, they're already, I mean, one of the main questions people ask when they're looking for a job is how many weeks vacation I'm going to have a year. Can you work a year first? And then we talk about the week off or so. <laughs> you know, so it goes back to what about me? It's not about us. It's not about me. Amen. Uh, do you see what I mean? Uh, so, so that's the thing, though. Uh, now, let's go back. Matthew 14. Matthew 14. On that perspective, then, it's not about you. Boo. Uh, that, that, that tide is going to be so... <laughs> Bella was about to testify here, and she looked at the title, she glanced over, she said, are you really going to say that? And I said, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I said, is that okay? She said, yeah, I guess. <laughs> but, you know, uh, first point I think is very important. Jesus sets the example that it's not about me. Matthew 14, 13 says, when Jesus heard it, and we know what we're talking about, when uh, John the Baptist was beheaded, when Jesus heard it, he departed from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. Uh, 
When the multitudes heard it, so we see that, we explored that Sunday. He wanted to be by himself. He went into a deserted place. But when the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. And when Jesus went out, he saw, watch this, when he went out, he saw a great multitude and he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. Now, we know that Matthew emphasizes that, but it's a pretty amazing when you do the, the you know, the, and you connect the Gospels, and you're going to see it, some very interesting things. Mark, the disciple Mark, uh, he explains why he was moved with compassion, Mark 6, 34. And Jesus, when he came out, he saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion for them, comma, because they were like sheep not having a shepherd. Amen? So it was not just that he had compassion that 10, 15,000 probably people that were there, but he had compassion on them because he looked at them and he saw, man, they have no sheep, no shepherd. They have no one to be a pastor to them. So because they were like sheep, not, ha not having a shepherd, so he began to teach them many things. Matthew was just like he had compassion, he healed their sick. Mark said, yes, he had compassion, he healed their sick, but he was teaching them many things. Dr. Luke emphasizes what he was teaching. That's in Luke 9, 11. But when the multitudes knew it, they followed him, and he received them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God. And healed those who had need of healing. Can you say amen? amen? So you see, he had a need. John the Baptist was beheaded. He wanted to be by himself. He sets the example. It's like, okay, I'm going to deal. Not that he wasn't, because he went to pray by himself afterwards. But he, he, he put that aside because he saw his assignment in front of him. Amen. He's like, wait a second. This is why I'm here for. So not that, and I'm not minimizing. Every time I say that, I, I need to be careful because I'm not minimizing pain. But sometimes uh, pain can be something that is blocking you from seeing the bigger picture. Amen. You know, sometimes, e even in, in our physical body, sometimes the pain, we deal with the pain and we don't go to the root of the pain. And the pain comes back a month or two or three months later instead of us, okay, why is that happening? So the pain could be a, just a, a sign of something deeper or something that is really like that needs our attention. Amen. So Jesus did not allow his pain to be, or, or the, what he was feeling at that moment, which I believe he wanted to mourn the death of John the Baptist or understand a little more. Or, you know, there's several reasons we could give here. But the, the, the thing is, he put that aside. He looked at the multitude. He had compassion on them. He teaches them about the kingdom, and he heals everybody. Now, John, he emphasizes why the people came. John 6, 2. Then a great multitude follow him because they saw his signs. That was it. Which he performed on those who were diseased. I like to speak slow of that word. It's not on purpose. Diseased. And it's not only a, a, a physical illness. When you go to the original, it could be anything that makes you be not uh, at ease. These eased. So which he performed on those who were diseased because they saw his signs. So you see compassion, you see teaching, you see kingdom, and you see something else. You see uh, he provided for their needs. Amen? So first one, Jesus set the example. Now, Matthew 14, 15, when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a deserted place and the hour is already late. Look what they said. Send the multitudes away. I mean, I think they were like, enough of too many people. Send the multitudes away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves food. Number two, needs uh, or, you know, our special or needs or something that we have. Needs review our limited resources and how much we think about ourselves. Let them go so they can buy food for themselves. Enough. You already taught the word. You had compassion. You taught about the kingdom. You provided for them. Enough, Jesus. Let them go. Go, go, go. I'm hungry. <laughs> right? That's basically what it was. It's like, okay, I shared that. So I do believe that. It's like, if we tell him we're hungry, he's not going to do anything. So we better tell the multitudes are hungry. 
You don't see the multitude saying they were hungry. You don't see the multitude chanting, we are hungry. We, we, we don't see that. It was like the 12 were hungry. Right? But that's the thing, though. Jesus uses the present need to test the disciples. And I believe that, that whatever need, uh, God can be using a specific need to review something. Not to, the, I mean, not to himself, because he knows everything, and not to the other people. When he, God uses a need to review something to who? Us. Because we got to understand, it's not about us, church. Look how John puts it. I mean, John is, you know, John 6, 5. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes. He's seeing a great multitude coming toward him. He said to Philip. Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But this he said to test him. For he himself knew what he would do. Philip, Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. Now, 200 denarii of, of worth of bread is about seven months' work. Because a denarii was paid for a day's worth work. So we're talking about, like, roughly, 200 denarii would be almost seven months. 210 would be seven months. But seven months worth of work. So right there we see it was way more than 5,000 people. It was 5,000 men plus women and children. Now, I think that is a key right there because, we, you know, what, what are we willing to give so that Jesus can bless others. Because I believe one of the things on this scripture, it is like the disciples themselves were not willing to give to the multitude. It could be because they thought it was not enough. But I think that it goes deeper than that. It's like if I give my lunchbox away, I'm not going to eat. See, it goes back to, it's not about you, boo. Boo. He does. He goes back to, no, 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 no. I mean, Jesus was very clear. And, and when we see that, it's like they went out to see who had something that would be willing to share. Hello? Because it's like, yeah, I mean, I don't think, I've been in many places. Uh, if there is one place where people get stuff, it's U.S. I mean, in Brazil, our garages are for cars. We used, and that's it. And, and we have fences and old bulb wires, and I'm not going to go into that. You know, but yes. And here it's like, no. And, and then when the garage is not enough to keep everything that is not a car in the garage, we get a shed, and a bigger shed, and then we rent a storage unit. And, and things that we're never going to see again for a long time. And, and, and again, it's, it's like an accumulation of stuff. I, re I still remember, you know, because when the kids were growing up and we were traveling, one of the things that was like a, really a God's, some, whoever invented the DVD in the back of your seat, yeah. in the car. No, that man was inspired by God. <laughs> because we could not travel half of what we did, you know, if it wasn't for that. But I still remember, because I, I never watched many of the Veggie Tales, right? But I remember one of the Veggie Tales was about Madame Blueberry. About stuff, 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 stuff. And she would go to this place that looks like Walmart and the music in the back. La, da, 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 da. Stuff, 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 stuff. I mean, until she loses everything. You know, but, but that's the thing, though. And, and, and I, again, it's like, how much enough is enough? You know, or why don't we turn the things, because some things, yes, some things is good to throw away. You know, I, I mean, I always think that if you're going to sow something to somebody else, it's got to be a good seed. But, you know, some things you throw it away, some things you could sell it, some things, but it's just there. And I think we need to be careful not to get to a place where we need more stuff. You know. I mean, it, it, could, be, it could be a thirst, a desire for more. It could be lust for more things. You know, and then I need to have more. I need to have more. Or sometimes he gives us a sense of security. You know, well, I have that in case I need it. And then 10 years later, you never used it. So that means you never need it. Or if you need it because you have so much stuff, you don't know how to find it. Because it's like, I know it's somewhere here. I mean, wait a second. Wait a second. And then you've got to fight through whatever you have. You know, so it's like, 
No, I mean, again, it's like, he, he, he is. How many of you believe Jesus is our provider? Amen. And how many of you understand this, that money is not always the solution? You know, what would, I mean, they were in the desert place, so even if they had enough money to buy bread, there was no place open or that would provide that much bread at that fast. Yeah, uh, I want to order uh, some bread. So we got this event going on, the sand, for example. It's like, yeah, uh, how many bread do you want? Uh, I don't know, I think 15,000. <laughs> Can you imagine? You go to a bakery, and you say, and how, how long do I have to? Uh, well, we need for like in 10, 15 minutes. That would be good. You know, no pressure. <laughs> oh, man. It wasn't about them. Now, number three, if we are to bless many, we need to know what we have, or at least what we have that we're willing to give. Mark 6.38 says, But he said to them, How many loaves do... Now watch this. Right there, that's where I saw that they had something that they didn't, they didn't want to share. But he said to them, How many loaves do you have? He didn't say, How many loaves the kid has? Yeah. The lad. How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they found out, they said, Five and two fish. It was, it was his lunch. John 6, 8. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, uh, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? Amen? Now, I, here to me is the powerful principle, and I always go to because there's uh, many different applications. Galatians 6, 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. I think Amplified says that and that only. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. He who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Now, the, the principle goes in a different direction, but the principle is there. Whatever you sow, we're going to reap. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season, say that with me, due season. So, you know, there is a season of harvesting. And let us not grow weary. So to me, everything that is in the words, there's a reason to be in the word. If it says let us not grow weary, it's because we're going to get weary. Sooner or later, we're going to go weary of doing good. You know, if for various reasons. And sometimes it's like you do good for someone. And if later on you find out like, it's like you, they didn't even deserve it. Or they throw whatever you gave them away. Yeah. Then you're like, see, that's why I don't give it. You know, so it is like, let us not grow weary while you're doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. So the enemy wants to work, that's where he wants to work, so we lose heart, no more expectation, it's not going to come, forget about it, I'm tired of this, I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to go to church, I'm not going to sow anymore, I'm not going to bless anybody, why am I going to do good, why am I going to bless uh, family life, why am I going to do in his hands, and I mean we start finding excuses not to do good based on whatever we go through and it's like well we're gonna have to get over a lot of stuff if we're gonna keep on doing good and and to me it's like uh, you, you know i think one key which i had like in me since i was in bible school is like when you do it as unto the lord so it's like, yeah, I want to do it to bless my kids, but I want to do it as to bless it unto the Lord. When I was in that house that I was, that I, you know, the family was not believers. They had 15 gods all around the house. And, you know, it was a challenging. And I, I, I felt like I want to be a blessing to them. This is like 94. And I started cleaning the house. I wasn't doing just because I wanted to see the house clean. I wanted to do it because I wanted to be a blessing to them. Which later on, <laughs> the husband thought I was his son reincarnated. Oh boy. <laughs> and I, let me be very clear, I don't believe in reincarnation, okay? So you don't say, oh, so he'll be, no, I don't. I'm just saying, because he would come, and he was a big, I mean, strong dude. He would come and hug me to break my ribs, like, <laughs> and he would call me my, his son. You know, like, oh, my son, <laughs> I knew he would come. 
and he would hug me, and I was like, oh, my God, what should I do, Jesus? Come back, Lord. Yes, rapture, now, you know. <laughs> and his wife was behind him, and she would, I mean, I, I still remember her little face, and she was like, You know, but I had fun. That's the thing. I was there probably two, three months. That's the thing, church. It is possible to go through those things and still have fun. It is. I mean, I would come in the middle of the night. I know it was an age thing too, but I, I, I mean, I think by now you see that I really try to enjoy everything I do. I don't always do it, but I tried. And, and when I do it, I do it as unto God. Amen. Even when I did, like, I, I paint the, 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 or, or kitchen over the weekend. You know, it is like, I did as unto God. Will they like it? I hope, because I'm not going to change that color. <laughs> you know, but it's like, it has to be, I do it as unto God. Because when we put anything we do as unto God, I mean, it should bring the fear of God. If I'm going to serve, if I'm going to bless, if I'm going to pray, if I'm going to talk, if I'm going to take someone to lunch or dinner or coffee or whatever, it is like, I'm doing as unto God. I'm not expecting anything back from the person. My expectation is because, you know, God told me, I'm not going to get tired in well-doing. Some people don't deserve it. Yeah, so what? I'm going to continue to do it because God loves the cheerful giver. And I'm really excited to give. You know, I said something Sunday was like a revelation. You know, when my dad said, are you out of your mind? I mean, that was a revelation. And I said, yes, dad, I am out of my mind. And I never went back to it. It's been almost 30 years. I'm not in my mind most days. It's like, no, I'm out of my mind. I'm out of the box. I'm out of what people say. You should do this or you should do that. It's no, no. I, 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 I mean, I, if I see a box, I break the box. I don't keep boxes. I throw them away. I mean, I, really. I mean, I love to throw stuff away. I mean, I love it. I love, it's just like, <laughs> Jesus, give me another trash bag. I mean, you know, I just love it. Make room. <laughs> Amen. So, but that's the thing, though. Uh, yeah. Now is the time for an update, right? <laughs> is that crazy? I mean, some things is like I never ever get a message for an update. And when I'm preaching now, you want an update? No, not now. No, I'm serious. Some things is like, you know, like today I was coming from the bathroom to my bedroom. I'm serious, Jerry. I'm not exaggerating. Lights were on. I didn't turn the little thing on. There was a huge spider. She saw me. I, I know she did because the moment she saw me, she dropped herself on my bed like, and she started running. And I thought, if I didn't catch it, she would be there by night to visit me. And I thought, there, no, I'm serious. She was not going down her little line thing. She just dropped like, Poof. and I thought, that's got to be the devil that was trying to interfere on my sleep at night, you know. So I rebuked it, and I sent it her to spider heaven or something. I don't know. Amen. So, again, there is a lad here who has five bar barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? But that's the principle. Let us not grow weary. Let us not grow weary. While you're doing good, in due season we shall reap. How many of you believe that? We shall reap. Amen. If we do not lose heart, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. You know, and, and I, I, I'm serious. You know, sometimes people want, or they call the church, or they, they want it to be some help or for gas or a little sandwich or something. You know, and sometimes we do. We have a little budget for, to, to do for those occasions. But it's like, I wonder, it's like, you know, they don't want to hear the word. They don't want their lives changed. They want just a handout. So their life is going to continue to be like that. And, I, you know, I, I think there's some things we need to do when we see a need, especially if we have something. You know, if we don't have it, it's different. But I think, uh, again, it has to be like what Jesus, he was teaching the word, uh, feeding them physically was the last thing he did. You know, so we need to be, to be careful with, with those things. Because to me, it's like, can you, be, can, can you come to one service at least? You know. One time we did. We, we gave a, a bike. It was not a brand new bike, but we found a place where we could get a decent bike for this man. He needed a bike to go to work. He never came to church. 
you know. So it, it is like the opportunity, or in, in Brazil, if we do it, it's like, no, no, you got to come to service first, and then we'll give you in the end. At least they're going to listen to the word at least once, you know, and, and we believe God is going to speak to them. So anyway, now look at this. Very important. Matthew 14 says, but Jesus said to them, they do not need to go away. He turns to them again. You give them something to eat. And they said to him, we have here only five loaves and two fish. For if we are to serve, serve others with what we have, bringing it to Jesus is the key. Amen? That's, it goes back to that principle. Everything that we do, we do as unto God. You know, in serving, in ministry, in, in, with our spouse, or, or kids, or friends, or we do unto God. So he said, bring them here to me. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 7. I think last week I was more on a teaching mode than when, we're, when I was sharing about the Holy Spirit. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So it's not like I have a gift to bless me. The gifts are to, for, to, for the profit of all, for the profit of the body, for everybody can be blessed. So the manifestation comes from the Spirit to our spirit, and we deliver whatever it is. I'm not going to get into that tonight. But it's like we got to understand if not everybody's going to profit from what I'm thinking is from God, it might not be. Because that is the sign right there. Now, Mark 2, 4 is another example, introducing people to Jesus. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was laying. And then what, what did they do? They carried the man to Jesus. Yeah. Our goal is to break, break, bring people that are paralyzed in sin or whatever is they're going through in life and bring them to Jesus. I cannot do it, but Jesus can. And we let them down in the presence of Jesus so they can have an encounter with Jesus. So they can walk in their own strength, their own legs, their own faith. And they can carry the thing that was carrying them. I love that message though. Now even our suffering can serve the purpose of pointing others to Jesus. Yeah, I'm going to say that again. Even our sufferings can serve the purpose of pointing others to Jesus. Acts 9.15 uh, when, when Jesus was talking to Ananias, the disciple. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. So he's telling all kinds of people. It's not just like Jews or Gentiles. or No, no, no. He said, yes, he's going to bring my name to everybody. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. And I believe that, you know, that each, when we understand that, that there is a dynamic even through the sufferings or the things God allows us to go through. How many believe He's sovereign? If He is a sovereign God, He has to allow things to happen that we might not have an understanding. But if we keep looking at Him, and I think I said Sunday about focus. If we keep looking at Jesus, and that was the problem of Peter, at one point He looked at the wind. I don't know if we're going to get time to get there far. You know, but it's like, how do you even look at the wind? Yeah. You don't look wind. You feel the wind. He really had to focus yeah. on something that was already there. Because it was not like the wind began when he stepped out. Right? Yeah. The wind was there already, but his focus was on Jesus. Yeah. Then when he was walking, I guess for a moment he thought, oh my God, what am I doing here? You know, so, so that's the problem. It's like sometimes we do have the faith to step out of the boat. We don't have, uh, um, how do you say, we don't have, a, we don't have an enduring faith to keep us walking where we thought we couldn't. Because that's what we need. You need the kind of faith that your faith will outlast the wind. Amen. Thank you, Lord. That's what we need. It's like we need to be so strong in faith, conviction of things we're hoping for, that it's like, yeah, the wind will die down eventually. We had a strong wind this week, wasn't it, here in Evian? Oh, my. It was like, 
the, even the internet, the TV, everything was acting crazy. I put on a map to go to, to, uh, to uh, Mattoon, and my map was showing two hours and 24 minutes, and I thought, my God, it's got to be some kind of accident or something. I mean, I think that's the day after the, of the wind. Something changed. And then I was like, I even texted you know, my wife and said, babe, can you believe it? 2024, it must be a terrible accident. <laughs> she started laughing. She sent a message back. She said, uh, uh, something in your phone is saying that it, that's my bike. <laughs> my bicycle. And I was like, oops, I didn't change it. But that would be a lot of pedaling. Against the wind. <laughs> Amen, church? Five, if we're to understand that it's not about us, we will have to count everyone. Jesus, Matthew 14, 19, he said, Then he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass. Mark was a little more detailed on this. Uh, Mark 6, 40, 40 said, So they sat down in ranks in hundreds and fifties. So what was Jesus trying to do? And I mean, in Portuguese, it's very clear that Jesus asked them to sit in groups of 50, in groups of 100. Uh, that to me is like, no, don't count just men. Count everybody. That's what we try to do. And that's my, my understanding in ministry is like everybody's important. I said everybody's important. The old, the young, the kids, the babies, those in the hospital, those connected online, those who cannot come to, co come to church, those who are going to listen later, those who will see this message two, three months from now. Everybody, we need to count and understand it is a different time. Church, the ministry, it, it goes so different from 10, 20, 30 years ago. And if we want to be effective and reach people... I'm not even, I'm not talking about an offering or tithes or how, no, 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 no. I'm talking about being a blessing to someone that might stumble into our message. We're going to have to expand our horizons and understand it's like, yes, and that's why I, I really try to emphasize, let us be careful not to interrupt the message. Because it's like that, you know, that one moment can shift things completely. And then it's like some things that I was going to say, I, I don't even go back to that. Or I mean, a lot of things could happen or even go wrong because we're not realizing, wait a second, we are be, being a blessing not only to those here, which is a blessing, but we can be a blessing to the world. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we don't know what God is taking. I mean, this is on God. He can do that, but we need to have that awareness. Are you with me? So it is very important that we count and, and when the opportunity or, or when God gives us a little information, because I believe sometimes he just gives a little piece of information and you keep at it and then you pray over it and all of a sudden he shines light on that little thing that he told you and that turns into something huge. But if we are not, you know, I mean, why would God give us something that he, when he gives us something, we never pay attention to it? You know, so again, we have to see it. Jesus wanted to count. I just want to make this point very clear. It's not about us. You know, it is about, and I understand, yes, God will bring and will provide and he will do that. But the focus should not be me or us individually. Is that clear? Okay, six. Uh, if we keep putting ourselves first, we never experience multiplication in the way that God intended to be. We don't. You know, I, I really believe it. I mean, there's many songs now about this, but I do believe we're blessed to be a blessing. We are blessed to be a blessing. Mark 6, 42. So they all ate and were filled, and they took up 12 baskets full of fragments and all, uh, and, uh, of the fish. Now, those who had eaten the loaves were about 5,000 men. And we know, plus women and children. Now, John emphasizes why he makes the disciples. This is, I, I just saw this today. It was really cool. Why he made the disciples go away to the other side. Do you know why? John 6, 12. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. Nothing is lost. There's, there's nothing in the kingdom there. He's like, no, no, they've just thrown that away. No, no, no. Gather away the fragments. Therefore, they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five lo barley, barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, 
Look at this, verse 14, John 6, 14. Then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, This is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. Therefore, when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he departed again to the mountain by himself alone. And I, I, I hope it sounds right. I didn't run by the girls to see if it made sense because sometimes I do it. It's like, is the English okay or the grammar or something? But um, this is a very important point. If it's not about us, we have to stop using Jesus like a lucky charm. Hello? Where we just go to him, you know, I mean, I'm serious. There's people that use Jesus and the Bible like a lucky charm, like a, like a little a, a bunny, how do you call it, that? rabbit foot. Yeah, you know, they, they open the Bible in Psalms 23 or Psalms 91. They never read it, but it's for luck, right? Or, I mean, this, I'm serious, you know, because we, we do have some of, some of those things in Brazil too. You know, like here, people are saying the name of Jesus, and then they knock on wood three times. Make up your mind. Knock on wood or Jesus? Not both, <laughs> Right? Because it's like, no, church, serving God and reading the Bible and believing His promises is not luck. Amen. No, 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 no. It, it, it has to, uh, something's got to happen. Remember, it, it, we could go back to one of the messages was about Naaman. He thought he was going to come out and rave his hand to his God. And the leprosy was going to disappear. And now he wants me to do this and that and go to the river. Don't we have better rivers? I mean, he thought it was magic. Just like healing. Healing is not magic. When you're healed, you're healed. <laughs> Done. I mean, you know. Now, my last point, which I, I got to go back to the, the text, but is this. They, if it is not about them, it's not about you, boo. You know, it's like you got to understand that the storm could be happening because I told you to go ahead of me to the other side, not because of you, but because there is ministry to be done. But if we focus so much on what we're going through, we miss opportunities to be a blessing to other people. And that's when I said Sunday, it's like, I'm not ready. I'm not prepared. I can't do this. Yeah, church, I say that every week. And I still do it. Because it's like, I know I'm not ready. I know I'm not prepared. Why? Because I don't want me to show up. I want him to. I want his word, his message, his power, his anointing. I can do nothing for anybody. But when the anointing comes, I can speak the same thing that I would in my strength. But when God breathes on it, yeah. you know, so that's what I'm talking about. But for that to happen, we're going to have to change it, uh, you know, but I, oh, I, I'm, I'm offended. I'm this and I'm that and look at me and look what they did to me, 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 me. No, no, no. I mean, people are people. And unfortunately, not, we're not going to please everybody, and not everybody's going to please us. Amen. So it, again, it's not about us. It is about Him. Yeah. But the more time I spend with Him, those things should not affect us as much. Because yeah, right. some things, they're sticky. <laughs> you know, it takes a while. But then you feel like, yes, God, somehow, He brings such a healing and it's like, man, I don't even feel like that anymore. What's wrong with me? Yes, you're out of your mind. Welcome to the club. I mean, you know, it's like. <laughs> so let me, let me finish there. Matthew 14, 22. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. Immediate. So now you know, because they were going to use Jesus as king. And, and sometimes that happens. You know, I, I remember when I went to churches and people were being healed. I remember kids that were my kids' age. I didn't have the kids yet. They would come to me and ask for my phone number. And I said, why do you want my phone number? And then he, they would say, well, in case I get sick, I call you. And I was like, I said, what? I said, yeah. I mean, man, I, I, you know, I got accidents all the time. So, you know, you shoot a prayer or something to me. And, and you know, it'll be okay. And I was like, you know. So that's what they were trying to do. Since Jesus multiplied bread and fish, whoo, we have a new king. When we have a need, Jesus, can you multiply here? Look, <laughs> do something. You know, and sometimes that's how people see it. It is like, again, it goes back to they don't see him. They, they, they want us, him to be the Savior, but they don't want him to be Lord. 
They don't want to be committed. You know, I mean, it goes back to Galatians. You know, people keep sowing into their, their flesh, and then they don't know why they have a problem with the flesh. Whatever you put in front of your eyes long enough, you're going to be like whatever you put it on. You know, so that's why you've got to watch what you watch and think what you think and say, think what you say and what you... I mean, it's a whole dynamic. It changes everything. It's like, no, 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 no. It's not about me. It's about Him. So if I'm going to watch something that is going to interfere with my relationship with Him, I don't want it. Amen. If I need to go somewhere that is going to affect faith and the, the God in me, I don't want it. I, I'm, I, this is how it is, church. And that's why we tried so much hard to put in our kids. It's like, guys, really? Right now we kind of help, and right now we can tell you things, but it's going to come a time, and it's going to come more than you think, where people are going to try to make the decision for you. And that's for every, every child. You know, <laughs> grandparents is the same. And that's why we have the time that we have left, and I tell them all the time, it's like, I'm going to be on top of your business. And if you don't tell me, God is going to show me, so you better tell me anyway. Because he does. I mean, God really shows me stuff that is like beyond my understanding. And then when I, I keep in my heart and when I share, it's like, oh, my God. You know, but that's the thing. As long as we have an opportunity, let us not, not only our kids, when we have an opportunity to sow a seed, a word, a word, a word, a word, a word, a word. I might not even see the harvest in my lifetime. But I know the seed is there. The seed is there. The word is there. The commitment is there. The desire to serve God and for them to serve Jesus. I don't want them to go through what I went through when I was from 13 to 19. That it was bad. You know. And I hope they won't. And I'm praying and I'm doing everything I can. But that's the thing though. We, we have to get out of ourselves. If we're going to be effective for the kingdom. Uh, I mean flesh has to be crucified. There's no business. There's no, not really. Not, I mean flesh, the only thing that flesh does, flesh is things. That's it. You know, and that's why we got, we're called to be a living sacrifice, which means what? <laughs> you're being crucified daily. If you were dead, it would be easier because you're dead. Dead is dead. But because you're alive, it is like you want to get out of the cross or out of the altar or out of the burning. You know, it is like, no, I don't want that. Oh, wait, wait a second. I didn't sign up for that. You know. When he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was alone there. And I shared that Sunday, you know, many times prayer is going to be a very, very lonely, very lonely place. But the boat was in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, I believe, four or five miles. Four or five miles. And John emphasizes that Jesus saw them. He had to be in the Spirit. How do you see in the middle of the night with the wind, with the waves, everything against it? He has to be supernatural that he could see them in the middle, four or five miles from the, the shore. Tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, all the emphasis on that is on Sunday message. They were troubled, saying, it's a ghost. They cried out for fear. Immediately, Jesus spoke to them. So Jesus was not trying to spook them. <laughs> he spoke to them. Saying, be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. Can you see that Jesus is not troubled with the wind and the waves and the beating against the boat? I don't think Jesus was like, oh, be of good cheer. Oh, it is I. I see him in control. I see him like, come on, guys, be a good cheer. And everybody's like, yeah, are you crazy? It is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, said, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. And he, I mean, and he said, come. And I mean, Jesus did not rebuke Peter for the desire to walk where he was walking. That tells me, yes, he's expecting us as disciples of Jesus, when storms of life come, you know, they will come. We can get out of the boat. And we can walk where Jesus walks. And we can be of good cheer in the storm. You know, I mean, we could. But again, what is going to hold us and what is going to bring us out of that, I mean, the boat was about to sink anyway. I mean, that's how I think. It's like, stay in the boat, walk on water. Stay in the boat, walk on water. You might sink, but stay in the boat. I mean, the boat's going down anyway. Let's go out. 
That's how it, it is. Like it has to be like it has to be something. If Jesus can do it, and there is an invitation, come, is because He's going to sustain me. You know, ministry. There's several. I mean, life alone. We're going to go through storms, but we have to trust the Word of God. I mean, it's powerful enough to take us through those storms. You know, I'm serious. My pastor, a long, long time ago, the, the battle that we went just to get a, not even green card and citizenship. It first was the religious visa. It was a pain. You know, and at one time, we were, I was crying. I was like, oh, this happened and that happened. And they saying this about me and this and that, and that. And I remember, he said, he stood in my face. You know, he was not very compassionate. But his words, it was like, he hit me right in the middle of my eye. He said, do you believe God called you? It was like, yeah. He said, stop crying. <laughs> Just like that. Very kind. You know. <laughs> yes. Very kind. He was like, do you believe the word of God or not? He said, yes, I do. No, you don't. Do you believe the word of God or not? Yes, I do. No, you don't. If you don't believe the word of God, go back and sell shoes. Yeah. I was like, okay. If God brought you, if God did this, I mean, he starts saying all those things that God did. He said, he's going to take it through. Yeah. I'm not saying it was fun. Because it was not. It was painful. It took forever and a lot of money. But we're still here. Amen. We're still here. We're serving God. We're doing the will of God. But that's the thing. It's not like, you know, we got to change the mindset that because I serve Jesus, I'm not going to have any storms. Yeah. I mean, actually, the scripture that comes to mind is like the foundation is revealed through the storm. Isn't that right? Yeah. A house in the sand, a house on the rock, a house on the sand. I mean, there was a beating, there was flooding, there was water, there was wind against both houses. But the one standing on the rock, which is Jesus. Yes, that one stood. Amen. The other one fit. So it's not like, you know, the rain comes to both, the righteous, the unrighteous. The, you know, it comes for both of us. The, those in the world, those in the church, those serving Jesus, those who are not serving Jesus. But it, it is that we have... Again, and I think I want to end with this. we got to have this enduring faith, which comes by hearing, hearing the Word of God. And the Word's got to go deep in us enough that it's like, we're going to be all right. Amen. We're going to be all right. It might be painful. It might be a lot of hours and prayer and fasting and whatever we need to, but we're going to be all right. Why? Because the Word says. Amen. We win. So, again, so he said, come, and when Peter came out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus, but when he saw the wind, was boisterous, boisterous, he was afraid. Beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith. Now, see, if little faith take you, takes you out of the boat, makes you walk on water, isn't that, that's not bad. But it was little. Because it was not an enduring faith. Why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, it would be like, you know, when God calls you to a ministry or something overseas or do something you've never done. And, and then you, you, you're so excited and you obey God. Right? I mean, that's pretty much it. You obey God. And then when you're walking on water, doing the supernatural, healing the sick, a few months later you realize, oh my God, how can I do this? <laughs> and you look at the circumstances and you sink. It is like, you know, I mean, you're walking on water already. So what? Continue. It's like, there's no, I mean, if I'm going to go back to the boat, it's got to be with Jesus. You know, but, but that's the thing, though. So there's no... We don't see Jesus or the disciples trying to put shame on Peter. Because sometimes it's like, I'm not going to get out of the boat. What if I sink? Well, what if you don't? Yeah. <laughs> you know, what if you experience something you've never experienced in your life before? So, oh, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. Now watch this, and I end what I, what I said, you know. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret. And when the man of that place recognized him, they sent out into all oh, that surround. See, it is not about you. Boo. It's right there. 
they sent out into all the surrounding region, brought to him all who were sick, and begged him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. Or we, could we say that maybe the devil was trying to sink that boat so his word would not come to pass? Or the attack came, you know, I mean, it's Mark 4 and Matthew 13, when he talks about we received the word with joy, the second type of soil. But since they have no root in themselves, they only last for a season. When persecution or tribulation comes on the account of the word, they quickly fall away. So it is like, church, before we have a fruitful life, we're going to have to have a, I don't know if there's the right word, a rootful life. We're going to have to, instead of a root, we're going to have to have root. We've learned the fruit. The word has got to be so deep in you that it's like the word of God says that. Amen. And I trust the word of God. So it was not about them. It was about going to the other city, which they misunderstood. It's like, uh, guys, what, what did you have yesterday? Yeah, five loaves of bread, two fish. I understand. Yeah, it was not even yours. Remember, you served the multitude. The same thing. The enemy attacked. We're in Gennesaret. That's why you went through what you went through. But let us focus on ministry. Let us focus on others. Let us focus. How can I be a blessing? How can I be of service? How can I, you know, again, and I want to end where I started. What would happen? If we apply that, I'm not saying we're not, but if we apply that principle to every area, marriage, raising kids or grandkids, friendships, jobs, instead of thinking about the benefits, do the job first. And well done job. It's like, no joke. It's like when you do it, do it to the way that people would think, oh my gosh, I'm not paying you enough. Mm Mm-hmm. Why? Because you're doing unto God. You know, let God justify. Let God be the one who blesses you. Let God be your source. Let God be the one. I always say that, and that's why giving to me financially, it is really about like, God, I trust you so much. That's why I give you. You know, and, and, I, and I've heard so many testimonies and people always giving 10% for I don't know how many years, and then I, I put 1% more. And I'm like, <laughs> who is counting? It's like, really? One percent? It's like, what if God tells you to, to double it? What would you do? Oh, I rebuke it in Jesus' name. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they would rebuke because there is that mindset. It's like, when we understand, it's not only 10 percent. I mean, I really believe it's like everything is God's. Amen. Everything. It, it is like God takes you to a place where it's like, do you really trust me? Yeah. And then you're going to know if you trust him or not when he tells you something that you would rebuke. Because that would be like, oh God, are you sure? Were you blessed tonight? I went a little over, but I thought it was a good word. So he's standing with me. (laughs) Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. So let's speak really loud for everybody to hear online. Are we still connected? Let us talk to everybody. It's not about you, boo. It's not about you, boo. Okay. Lord God, we thank you, Father God. We thank you that in your presence there is fullness of joy. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord God, that you're opening our eyes so we can be more effective in the kingdom. I'm sure, Lord God, everybody here, everybody online, this is our desire. Lord, we talk, we sing about, to, to, this is our desire. Lord, to love you, to serve you, to, to do things in ministry. But, Lord, it has to be focusing on you and not on us. So I pray tonight and I ask you, Lord, for the moments, because they, they might have happened, but that you would forgive us for the moments that our focus or the focus was on us and not on you. The focus was on us and not on other people. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray. And I, I'm really hoping and declaring this over our church. Lord, that it's a church that think about others, that think about how to serve, how to be a blessing, how to love, how to invest, how to, Lord, do some things for others and create a chain reaction. Lord, that others, we want to do something for others. Lord, in Jesus' name, that we would see a great multitude of people being fed with the Word of God. That we would see multiplication taking place. That we would see, Lord God, that you use even the broken pieces in our lives. 
the things we don't understand, the sufferings, the tribulations, Lord God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray and I ask you, Lord God, that we would, Lord God, just shift the focus, that we would see what you want us to see and do what you want us to do and be what you want us to be, Lord. In Jesus' name. Lord, I think it was a great lesson for the disciples, and it is for us today. I pray, Father God, that we, we would be like, like Peter, having this desire in us to walk where you walk. To walk on your word, knowing that you're going to hold us. Knowing that, Lord, even if we sink, you're close to us. And we can cry out, Lord, because that's your promise, that you are our present help in times of need. So, Lord, I speak that over our congregation and everyone watching online. You are our present help. You are our present help in times of need. You are our provider, Lord God. So I ask you, Lord, that this word, that we would see great fruit, great results from it. That, Lord, we would be challenged and encouraged to serve you in, in newer capacities in Jesus' name. Thank you so much, Lord God, for the time and the, the, the freedom that we have to share your word. Thank you, Lord God. We don't take it for granted. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to reach and touch and speak to so many people all over the world. And I pray, Lord, that you would bless us tonight as we go. Lord, I pray for the peace of God. And Lord, declaring that the wind will not last forever. I declare this tonight. Lord, winds, they come and go. They come and go. They don't stay forever. They come and go. So we're declaring tonight over everybody's whatever storm it is, Lord, that the storm is dying down in Jesus' name. Lord God, that once we learn the lesson, as we get back into the boat, the wind ceased. So I pray that we would learn the lessons you want us to learn. And I pray that we move forward to do ministry in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? amen. Come on, let's give it up one more time.